this trip to Angamba is kind of different than any other trip I've ever been on. Most trips you kind of dream about going somewhere as you say, you know what, I want to go to Chile, I want to go to Patagonia, I want to go New Zealand. And then you work towards getting there with a certain expectation. For this trip it was kind of it was kind of brought up and we kind of just ended up here. And to tell you the truth, I never knew much about the territory. I mean, yeah, Ungamba, Northern Quebec, Labrador. You know, I heard little stories here and there, but once I actually got here and got to experience it without any preconception of what it actually looks like and what it is, it's actually probably a better experience and a better surprise because I've got, I've got no expectations. And what's even better on this trip, you know, being here with two amazing friends, me, Fred, and Phil, you know, the chemistry is just amazing. We, we kind of wake up in the morning and all we can talk about is fishing. You're supporting your friends and, you know, you're having a good time and that we're all kind of living our dreams together. So I'd never fished for a char before. And the only thing I've ever seen on the internet or anything is big, huge flies. And we're kind of used to that fishing salmon. So we show up here and the first thing they tell us is that all our flies don't work and they're too big. So we've got no small flies with us. Uh, we kind of got a few here from the lodge. Thank God I brought my kit so now we can kind of make our own flies. Kind of make it in the little stone fly patterns, gonna try to make some colorful ones, kind of you know, colorful and stuff like that. So now I'm stocking up on ammunition and make some buggy looking stuff. Today we're taking advantage because it's not really nice outside. So we're stuck at camp. We've been playing cards all morning, we had breakfast. And now we're waiting for the weather to clear up to hopefully go fishing this afternoon. We just landed here in uh, Baudancourt, a new spot. We've been waiting all morning to get out, get some big char on the land today. craziest days I've ever had fishing. We're sitting there, helicopters all around, and everyone's hooking up. Helicopters are leaving, and then Phil hooks up. I'm freaking out, gonna run, go get the fish, lose my hat, <laughs> losing our shit, the biggest fish of the day. Helicopter comes back, circling around us, like, never in a million years would I think that would ever happen to me. I'm looking up with a fish in my hands, thinking I'm gonna get surrounded by the army and we're fishing. <laughs> the government the bill. I had only been in a helicopter once before this, um, and it's such a cool feeling to kind of be in the air, but being in a low profile, so you can see black bears, we can see the polar bears, we went to see, uh, you know, you can see icebergs in the distance. We actually went from fishing to the eastern shore of the Ungamba Bay in Quebec to take off in the afternoon, and go for a ride to Labrador. We got to see these abandoned, what seemed like ghost towns of a village on the east, eastern shore of Labrador. 
can tell no one had been there in such a long time. Old abandoned buildings and everything has grown in. You could tell it was kind of, I don't know if it was a shelter, if it was like a, a church. Yeah. But you can definitely tell there's people living there and that they were a small community, but go into these houses and you can feel all the history, but uh, I definitely know what they mean by the expression uh, in the middle of nowhere. We don't really know what at this point. It's pretty freaky to see uh, see what this looks like and what people kind of lived like back in the day and that people actually lived here for um, now that it's all gone and being rebuilt. Pretty amazing stuff. time you go to a pool, you going by chopper, then flying somewhere else, it's, it's crazy. I literally feel like I'm in an action movie. It's an amazing experience to just every day fly in, fly out. southern border, so that's pretty cool if you ask me. And it's actually the highest peaks in continental eastern Canada. I feel like I'm in the movie Rambo. It's amazing. I mean, the scenery, just look around and you keep seeing mountain ranges, mountain ranges, and just there's no vegetation. It's just like going back in time. I can't even describe seeing waterfalls to your left, to your right. The sun's kind of hitting the mountain ranges, makes it look twice as big and they're huge. Whether I catch fish today or not, it's just an amazing feeling to be in these kinds of environment. Never thought I'd see something like this. Didn't even know this existed in Canada. The views here are just phenomenal. Again, I'm about six hours flight from my hometown, Moncton, Brunswick, and I feel like I'm on the other side of the earth. I mean, we went into the Torn Gats in Labrador the other day, and I literally felt like a bird in the sky, and everything else is so massive, I and mean, I'm just a speck in, you know, sand on the beach. And in comparison, we just feel so small. I mean, we're going through these fjords and everything is just so big. Some of the biggest mountain ranges in Eastern Canada, you're looking at these mountains and these waterfalls all over the place, such fast, powerful current. I mean, you're looking at some of the most beautiful water I've ever seen in my life. You're talking about aqua blue, aqua green. I mean, you can see the pebbles on the bottom of these lakes and rivers is just phenomenal. You know, we go over some of these pools and you just see fish from, from a mile away, it's just so clear. Thank you. 
Char in Labrador. Oh, it's a bell dude. Woo! <laughs> Les chaiseux, là? Forme d'app. Génial. Yeah, boy. Yes. We're just approaching uh, Ellen Falls and uh, now we're switching to Atlantic salmon fishing. And wait, big water, big flies, swinging hard, gonna be a good time. Oh yeah. Helen Falls was uh, first uh, discovered in 1953. It's the first camp that was ever established in northern Quebec. It retains number 100501. It was invented by the, discovered by the uh, manager of the Hudson Bay Company in the mouth of the Fifth River, George River. The, the salmon here is in the, in the most northerly limit, and uh, I think to survive and to be able to migrate in this river, we have a, a shorter, stronger fish. Uh, this is the extreme north part of the subarctic and, uh, and combined with the strong fish, we have fast water, small pools. We're talking about some serious, challenging salmon fishing. Really listening to your guides, they know what they're doing, they know their water, and once you start getting accustomed to how they do things and take their advice, then we started getting some amazing action, and then you start catching these techniques, you're riffling that hitch, but I'm a salmon fisherman at heart, I just love swinging for flies, and I figured, okay, I've got this technique down, I know how to catch salmon, so I'm going to make it happen, no problem. You get here, and looking at this big, huge bay of a river, and I'm thinking, okay, this is not what I'm used to seeing. We see kind of one shoot here in front of the lodge. So then we find out that the stretch we're actually fishing is about a two and a half kilometer stretch. And it's not your typical river. It's actually called Ellen Falls. And it's a chute that's inclined for two and a half kilometers. And what you're actually fishing is those, that big chute. All along there, there's about 11 name pools and some, some in-between pools. And you show up in these little pockets, there's no current, it's a back eddy. You're trying to figure out how would I fish this, and you, they don't want you to use big bombers. So that's what I'm used to using, and this is what he wants me to use. So pretty much 90% of the time you're fishing with a riffling hitch, 
and you're trying to strategically make your fly skate on top of the water and at first you're not sure if you have confidence because you haven't seen action yet but then when you do hook onto that first big bright fish and you've got to try to keep it out of these big falls it's the ride of a lifetime and when they do take it's amazing the feeling you get that fish on and they're so strong we're usually within a day of being fresh from the ocean. Every fish we got had sea lice, it was amazing. back on everything that happened and the first day feels like it was two months ago we had so many great experiences uh, again here with Phil and Fred you you get to bond in a different way when you're fishing I think because it's not just going out for a drink going out for supper you know you're you're sharing your passion with someone you're sharing the river and um, you kind of create this weird bond that you know you give that high five your buddy gets his fish you're so happy for him uh, it's a joy that you know I've seldom come across in other scenarios and um, so now going home it's gonna be hard to adjust to real life again you know I'm used to waking up in the morning the sound of you know waterfalls the sound of you know nature I haven't had a phone call email seen a car in two weeks and that's the beauty of being on the river just being at peace with nature your highlight of the day is just you know sitting back trying to enjoy the moment take a deep breath and just look what's around you because you know you know it'll only last for today and uh, you gotta take it as it comes I mean I'm, I'm so thankful for the opportunity and the chance to come here uh, um, I couldn't I couldn't be happier my whole trip was amazing uh, I'll remember this for the rest of my life and Labrador Northern Shore Labrador and Quebec and the Anguilla Bay will have a special place in my heart because uh, I never thought I'd have this type of adventure in so close to my hometown but uh, now I know and now I can hopefully tell everyone else how beautiful this place is and uh, I'll definitely uh, enjoy it for the rest of my rest of my life.